بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's lesson which is the first part of the expansion the first part of the expansion of course we'll be answering all of today's lesson will be answering questions about units 1, 2, 3 and uh, 4 so page 62 here open page 62 Two. The first part of the, the first part of the expansion is the language review. The uh, language review. A. Find the phrasal verbs in the sentences. Decide if they are used correctly. If not, rewrite the sentence. So again, so we'll be writing, uh, write, uh, reading all of these sentences. Find the phrasal verbs. So we'll be finding the phrasal verbs in the sentences. Decide if they are used correctly. If they are used correctly. If they are not used correctly, we will rewrite the sentence in the correct way. So this is talking about the, of course, phrasal verbs lesson, if you remember it from uh, unit two. A phrasal verb is made of a verb plus a, a, a particle, just like this one, picked at, or here picked on. This is the phrasal verb. A particle is a word that is used as an adverb or a preposition. The particle gives the verb different meaning. One verb can be combined with different uh, particles to create different meanings. For example, here, pick at, it means eat without enthusiasm. Uh, pick on, pick out, choose, pick up to get by. And remember, there's also a second part here, the three word phrasal verbs, which we have in this exercise. The three word phrasal verbs that consist of a verb, a verb plus the uh, particle plus a preposition. The three word phrasal uh, verbs are uh, non-separable. You can't separate them, non-separable. The noun or the pronoun always comes after the phrasal verbs. For example, here the doctor says you must cut down on. Cut down on. Catch up on. Come down with, drop out of get along with, and so on. So getting back to our uh, exercise here. Number one, it is a shame to see people throw money away buying uh, silly things. It is a shame to see people throw money away buying silly things. So where is the uh, phrasal verb here? It is a shame to see people throw money away buying thing, buying silly things. So the phrasal verb here is, yes, to uh, throw away, throw away. And the object here is money. So is this correct or not? Or do we need to correct it? To throw money away, it is correct. It is correct. So it is uh, correct. It is a shame to see people throw money away buying silly things. Number two, this cake is delectable. This cake is delectable. Thanks for whooping up it. Number two, this cake is uh, delectable. Thanks for whooping up it. So where's the uh, phrasal verbs here? The phrasal verb. So, where is it here? Yes, thanks for whooping up it. So, we have a three word uh, phrasal verb. So, is it correct or not? Again, thanks for whooping up it. Yes, it's incorrect, and the correct way is to write it thanks for whooping it up. We put the pronoun in the middle. Thanks for whooping it up. This cake is delectable. Thanks for whooping it up. Number three, just the aroma of breakfast is enough to wake up me. Just the aroma of breakfast is enough to wake up me. So I think now you noticed the uh, phrasal verb here. Yes, it's wake up me. Is this correct or not? Very good, it's incorrect. So the correct way is to wake me up. 
the aroma of breakfast is enough to wake me up. Number four, fried food is an uh, unhealthy indulgence. You should give it up. You should give it up. And this one is correct. You should give it up. Number five, I'm looking forward to seeing my grandparents. I'm looking forward to seeing my grandparents. Is this correct or not? Number five. So, number five is correct. Looking forward to. So, there's nothing wrong here. Number, uh, uh, number six, the vendor ran nachos out of uh, halfway through the baseball game. So, the vendor ran nachos out of halfway through the baseball game. So, I think now you notice that, that there's something wrong here. The vendor ran nachos out of. So, how do we correct this one? Yes, the vendor ran out of nachos. Ran out of nachos halfway through the baseball game. Number seven, I, uh, I substitute honey for sugar in my tea. I can't tell apart them. I can't tell apart them. So, this is wrong. So, the correct answer would be, yes, I can't tell them apart. I can't tell them apart. Again, I substitute honey for sugar in my tea. I can't tell them apart, which means that they have the same taste. Being diagnosed with heart disease has turned my father into a healthy eater. Being diagnosed with heart disease has turned my father into a healthy eater. So, number eight is correct. Turned my father into. There's nothing wrong here. Number nine, we ran our professor into the library. We ran our professor into the library. Is there something wrong here? Yes, of course. And the correct answer would be Yes, we ran into our professor, by coincidence, of course. We ran into our professor at the library. Number 10, don't you get tired of staying at home all of the time? So, don't you get tired of staying at home all of the time? So, number 10 is also correct. Exercise B, rewrite each sentence using the passive with a reporting verb. Passive with a reporting verb. If you remember the passive with a reporting verb, like here, it is said, it is uh, believed, or you can say, she is said to be, dolphins are believed to be, and so on. So the first part is it, then passive reporting verb, that, close. It, passive reporting verb, that, then the continuing with the clause, or you can write it subject, passive reporting verb to, then the infinitive or the perfect infinitive. So the first one here is already done. Scientists say that Alzheimer's disease is an inherited disease. So make it into a passive using reporting verb. We begin, remember, we begin the passive always, we begin with the object. Alzheimer's disease is said to be an inherited condition. So, because here it says, scientists say, that's why we chose the word said. I think this is an easy one here. Number one, many historians believe that Chinese made the first fireworks over 2,000 years ago. Many historians believe that Chinese made the first fireworks over 2,000 years ago. So, it is Many historians believe that Chinese made the first fireworks over 2,000 years ago. How do we make this one into a reporting verb? It is very good. It is believed, because here is the verb believed, that the Chinese made the first fireworks over 2,000 years ago. Number two, people think that the Egyptians were the first people to, dem um, to domesticate the cat. People think that the Egyptians were the first people to uh, domesticate the cat. So, 
What do we say here as a reporting verb? It is, yes, it is thought. We don't say believed or said because here we have think. It is thought that the Egyptians were the first people to domesticate the cat. Number three, people thought space travel was impossible 100 years ago. So space travel was, let's see the correct answer here, was thought to be, was thought to be impossible 100 years ago. Number four, they think Rima is responsible for spreading the rumor. They think, so we have think here. They think Rima is responsible for spreading the rumor. So what do we say here? Rima is, yes, very good. Rima is thought to be responsible for spreading the uh, rumor. Number five, people say the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So it is, yes, it is said that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Who say this? People. Number six, people once considered that the earth was flat. People once considered that the earth was flat. So we say the earth was, yes, once considered to be flat. The earth was once here, once considered to be flat. The government expects that unemployment will, will decline by 2% this year. The government expects that unemployment will decline by 2% this year. So unemployment is, let's see here, is expected, very good because here we have expect, is expected to decline by 2% this year by the government, of course. Number eight, doctors consider that many cancers are treatable if they are caught early. Doctors consider that many cancers are treatable if they are caught early. So many cancers are, yes, Many cancers are uh, thought to be treatable if they are caught early. So when we find the word consider, it means think or thought. So that's why we chose thought. Many cancers are uh, caught or considered, it's the same thing, to be treatable if they are caught early. Exercise C, rewrite each active sentence as a passive sentence. So change from active to passive. If you remember this lesson, uh, the uh, passive models follow the structure model plus B plus the past participle. They will release, the tiger will be released. So this is the active here, will release the tiger. So we begin with the object in the passive and we say will, this is the model here, B and here B, the past participle is released. So and continue with this form. The model will be released. May cancel here, for example. May, this is the model, be canceled, and so on. So let's get back, rewrite each active sentence into a passive sentence. You can prevent many illnesses with a healthy diet. You can prevent many illnesses with a healthy diet. So, many illnesses begin with the object, can be prevented. The model, be, then the past participle. Can be prevented with a healthy diet. So I think now how you, uh, you know how to answer. The school board may cut the school's budget next year. The school board may cut the school's budget next year. Begin with the object. Very good. The school's budget may be cut next year by the school board if you want to add the uh, subject. Number three, people can cure hiccups by drinking a glass of water quickly. 
people can cure hiccups by drinking a glass of water quickly. So begin with the object. Yes, hiccups can be cured by drinking a glass of water quickly. Very good. Number four, uh, young people should treat older people with respect. So, yes, very good. Older people should be treated with respect by young people, if you want to add. Students must submit their application forms by March 13th. Students must submit their application forms by March the 13th. So this one is really easy. Application forms, the object, must be submitted by March the 13th. Parents should read the, to their children every day. Yes, very good. Children should be read to every day by parents, if you want to add the subject. Uh, a pharmacist should, keep, should explain the potential side effects of the medication. The potential side effects of the medication. Yes, very good. So the, the object here, the potential side effects of the medication should be explained, of course, by the pharmacist. Number eight, a doctor has to diagnose a disease before he can treat it. A doctor has to diagnose a disease before he can treat it. So, yes, a disease must be, so has to become must be diagnosed before it can be treated by a doctor. Number nine, I think scientists will find a cure for cancer in the near future. So begin with the object, a cure. So I think a cure, so this is the object here, but we began with I think. I think a cure for cancer will be found. So because this is the auxiliary verb here, will be found in the near future. Number 10, the chef may add new items to the menu next week. The chef may add new items to the menu. So begin with the object, very good, new items, may be added to the menu next week by who? If you want to add the subject, by the chef. Exercise D, look at the pictures, write a past hypothetical sentence about each. So look at the pictures, page 63, look at the pictures and write a past hypothetical about uh, each uh, picture. If Marco had been paying attention, he might not have spilled the milk. Of course, you notice Marco with his uh, roommate, he spilled and he was spilling the milk while he was busy with something else. So that's why we said if Marco had been paying, had been paying attention, he might not have spilled the milk. So look at the pictures again, write a past hypothetical sentence about each one. And if you remember, this is the past hypothetical, uh, past hypothetical conditional here. Uh, the, uh, we used the past hypothetical conditional about things that did not happen. And the form in the if clause, we use, uh, we use the past perfect in the if clause, and we use would have could have or might have in the result clause. So picture number B, what do we say here? So let's see the correct answer. If Marco hadn't spilled the milk, his roommate wouldn't have stepped in it. If Marco didn't spill the milk, his roommate, he wouldn't have stepped in it. Next picture, same way, very good. If his roommate hadn't stepped in the milk, he wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have slipped. So we're using the past hypothetical with the if clause and of course the result clause. Next picture. Okay, very good. If his roommate hadn't slipped, he wouldn't have broken his leg. And you can notice the picture that he has uh, uh, broke his leg. If his roommate hadn't slipped, he wouldn't have broken his leg. Next picture, same way. Very good. If his roommate hadn't broken his leg, he wouldn't have gone to the hospital. You can see in the picture that now he is in the hospital because he broke his leg, because he slipped on the milk that Marco spilled. 
If his roommate hadn't broken his leg, he wouldn't have gone to the hospital. Picture number F. Yes, if Marco hadn't said sorry, they would have argued. But you can see in the picture that they are not arguing because Marco apologized. If Marco hadn't said sorry, they would have argued. And the last picture, very good. If Marco had cleared the kitchen, his roommate wouldn't have had the uh, accident. And the language builder here for you, it's common to use the negative contractions hadn't, wouldn't, and couldn't in conditional sentences. However, Americans don't usually use contractions for might not. It's not wrong to say mightn't, mightn't have, it is uh, just, it just doesn't sound right to an American ear. So saying mightn't, short for might not, it's not wrong, but it's, uh, it doesn't sound right to the American ear. Exercise E, imagine a series of events that could, uh, that could happen in your own future. Use present hypothetical to write six sentences. Use could, would, and might. So this one to talk about uh, uh, your own uh, future using the present hypothetical. Of course, use uh, could, would, and might. If I got a job, I could save money. For example, if I saved uh, some money, I could buy that, that new game. If I saved money, I could buy that game. If I woke up late, I might uh, miss the bus. If I were not busy, I would help you, and so on. You can continue with even more than six sentences. And with that, we reach the end of this lesson. See you next lesson, inshallah. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu anna la ilan tastaghfir kutubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum.